All right, people. Looks like I am on. Um, my name is Joe Magalette, and I um, this podcast I call History, Prophecy, and Current Events. And so tonight uh, we're going to be talking about um, what happened Monday, um, the the uh, um, solar eclipse, and I'm going to work my way um, up to talking about why I think it's uh, important. For the United States to pay attention to that, um, to that uh, eclipse, and why eclipses can, um, at times, really have um, a warning to them for the nations, the Gentile nations, or to um, Israel. And so, let me go ahead and hit the intro video, and then we'll get started right away. All right, everybody, so um, I'm going to talk about um, the, uh, begin with something that happened in September 14th, 2023, and this was a, um, at Arlington Cemetery, there was about 30 people who came together to remember British General Ord Wingate, and the reason why I want to bring up um, this guy is because he's very important to I think the story of what happened with the nation of Israel and so let's just go back to that time um, after the fall of World War one the British um, did something very important they had what is called the Belfort Declaration which said that the British government um, wanted to bring the Jews back and bring them back into the land to be a nation again they drew a map of the land and the land that they drew for the nation of Israel pretty much was pretty close to the biblical map which means that it was going to be huge okay and of course what happened um, in the British uh, government was many many people came against that because they knew that if they went against the Arabs um, that was going to be bad they 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 wanted to keep good relationships with India. So to just um, basically push this idea of a, um, a state for the nation of Israel to bring them back to the land, which God had said that this is his land for his people, and these Christians believing that it was time to do that, um, obviously Satan big time pushed back. And so there was, there was these very leftist wicked people wanting they were already pushing um, against any idea that the nation of Israel could ever come back. And the evangelicals among them, though, um, continued to pursue this in spite of the fact that the British government had a mandate, okay, in the nation of Israel. Because after World War I, the Ottoman Empire fell apart, right? They, they, they were destroyed. And so that whole territory, which was a part of the Ottoman Empire, which they called Palestine, we call the nation of Israel, um, the British now had authority there. Well, what the British did was during the 1930s, they got more and more, um, let's say, anti-Israel. And this um, officer, um, at the time, I think it was just a captain, Ward Wingate goes there. And so he's in Israel and the Arabs are trying to kill the Jews, and the Jews are trying to kill the Arabs. Um, very weird kind of thing. There, there was um, groups um, in Israel um, fighting for the nation of Israel, which they called terrorist groups, obviously. Um, the Haganah, the Ergon, um, there was another one. Um, I'm just blanking on the name of the other one. But here was Ord Wingate, and he was helping the Jews fight against the Arabs. And what he did was he established nighttime raids, training them in what we would say today was the beginning of learning um, special forces techniques or whatever. And he was brilliant at it. Um, his um, superiors did not like what he was doing. They didn't think it would work. They thought it was stupid. Um, but the thing is, God had put his hand on him, made him very, very successful. When I went to Israel, I was very surprised. I went to this uh, place where 
um, they were taking care of children who had lost their parents. And I go in and there was a statue and a thing up about Ward Wingate. And I had read about him and knew about him and knew he was really honored um, there. Well, what did the British do? The British took him out of Israel because he was very clear to everybody he wanted to help reestablish the nation of Israel and fight for Israel. So the British kicked him out. And so let me read from the article just a little bit. Um, so you kind of get a, a picture of this. And I think, I think the reason why this I want you to have this picture is because I'm going to apply some of this to today, okay? Anybody who stands with Israel and believes that Israel needs to um, buck it up and fight and take her land, um, you would be called every name in the book. You would be, you know, harassed, going against, whatever. Um, the left is really good at that. You'll be cancel culture, whatever. And this happened to Ord Wingate. So um, it says, uh, we are rightly celebrating Major Ord Wingate's contribution to Israel, his very strong support of the creation of the State of Israel. Um, this was... Uh, Karen Pierce, the British ambassador to the United States, speaking to a small crowd of about 30 people. Um, these were mostly British and Israel, Israeli officials and just a few American Jewish war veterans. Wingate is best known for his exploits in World War II's China-Burma-India theory, um, theater. He had previously served in the British Mandate of Palestine, which is modern Israel, during a Palestinian uprising in the 1930s, he led um, teams of Jewish commandos against guerrillas trying to attack Jewish communities. He died in an airplane crash on March 24, 1944. Now, why am I bringing this up? Um, I want to start with a scripture. And I want to make a point about this scripture because I was studying this scripture in my Romans class. And it just dawned on me that the same pattern that we see what God did with Pharaoh, he's going to have to do today. Okay, and this is over and over and over again, it's talked about in the scriptures, that the land of Israel is going to have people in it that are going to say um, Jews can't come here. And that's what we see. We've seen this from the 1930s. We see this since Israel became a nation. And these people are going to fight to make sure that Israel cannot have her land. They're going to fight to drive them out and all of those things. So it says here in Exodus chapter 3, let me just go ahead and read it to you. He says, I will, um, but I know that the king of Egypt will not permit you to go except under compulsion. So here's Exodus 3. Moses gets um, his job from God. God says, you need to go. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And he says, but I do know that the king of Egypt will not permit you to go. And he um, is going to have to be pushed and under compulsion make you go. And we know those that was the ten plagues. So he said, I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my miracles, which I shall do in the midst of it. And after that, he will let you go. And so that's a very important um thing because we see in the scriptures in several of the prophets that there's no way the world will ever go along with Israel being a nation. So immediately, 1948, they become a nation. What happens? War. 56, war. 67, war. 73, war. And since then, it's been basically um, the kind of war is an asymmetrical war um, using terrorists and using um, smaller armies to attack to try to destroy um, the state of Israel. Now, what's bizarre about it is that these organizations and these groups um, have all been very clear in their um, constitutions or whatever they've put together, whatever they're going to call them, their charters um, for these groups, have written in that they have the um, job and the goal of wiping out every Jew in the world. It's just another genocide holocaust that they want to bring um, about but let me to read two scriptures to you and these are about the signs so god says 
that he was going to bring signs on the earth so that you would understand all of these things. So Genesis 1 14, he says, then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens, separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. So we know that here is the, the, the um, sun and the moon are there for signs. Okay. The biggest sign is that it marks the days. So you have six days to work, seven days. So seven, everything's built on seven. And we have this whole idea of 7,000 years. And it was a basically 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years from Abraham to Jesus, and 2,000 years from Jesus to us, which means after the 6,000 years, there's a Sabbath rest coming, which we call the millennium, for a thousand years so we're getting very close so just the number seven and the way God structured the week um, and structured the years up to seven thousand tells you that's a sign okay of what's coming and the word that he uses for sign here oh it, it's applied in a lot of different ways okay so in Genesis 4 um, he uses the word sign to apply to Cain Cain um, killed Abel, right? And then God judged him, and he put a, a sign on him, a mark, to say, nobody kill Cain, okay? Um, then, um, interestingly enough, you know, he had other ways of using this word sign. Genesis 9, he used the same word, oath, as a sign. What is it? Well, when the flood happened, God made a sign, that's still with us to stay. This sign is still a warning to all of the earth and it's the rainbow. The rainbow is not just saying God's not going to flood the earth again, but it's a warning to the earth. If you sin the way the days of Noah were, um, be sure that the, the judgment of God is coming on the whole, whole earth. This is Jesus said, right? Just as it was in the days of Lot, just as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days of the coming of the son of man that is a sign so you have a sign the rainbow is a sign it's a sign of god's grace but it's also a sign um, of god's judgment okay the next sign i think these are very important and this is when god said to moses go to pharaoh and he called the ten plagues ten signs and what was that? That was a judgment on the nation of Egypt. Now listen very importantly. The judgment that was made on Egypt was because of how they treated the Jews. God said that if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. But if you curse them, you'll be cursed. And Egypt was cursing Israel up and down. And then God was going to judge them for that. It is a sign. The whole um, ten plagues up to the Passover is a sign, a sign in a lot of different ways, okay? It's a sign because it has to come on a specific day, which God says Passover. And it's a sign to all the nations of the world, do not stand against my nation Israel in her land, keeping her from her land. And so God will do this to other nations. What he did to Egypt, he makes this promise in the book of Leviticus, Leviticus 18, he makes this promise in several other places. And so we know scripturally that these signs are, and I'll just read, read from the scriptures um, how this worked out in Israel when they went to um, the, the land in Numbers 13 and 14, and they sent the 12 spies in, and they came out, and the 10 spies convinced the nation of Israel they should not go in. And here God uses the word oath sign um, in his criticism of his own people. And he judged them and marched them around for 40 years. But listen to what the Lord said. And I, I'm going to apply some of these verses like right to today. Because I see the solar eclipse on Monday as the culmination of many of these signs. Basically to the point where America has not repented. I think we have a chance. Um, I think it's done. Um, God is judging the United States of America. And so he said, you know, in Numbers 14, 
He said, The Lord said to Moses, How long will this people spurn me? How long will they not believe in me, despite all the signs which I have performed in their midst? This is Numbers 14, um, verse 11. And all the signs which he did in their midst. And you can see there were more signs than the ten plagues for the Jews. Um, God showed them how he could fight and beat that nation. And um, it was very clear that they should have trusted God and known that God um, could give them the land of Israel. And it was, it's, you know, it's kind of interesting that Joshua and Caleb, um, there were people who had faith. They believed God. They trusted God. They had a different spirit, God said. And so um, this is a pattern of how things are going to work. Okay, This is the pattern of Israel today. Israel um, is run by the ten spies. And so let me go to 2011. Okay. In 2011, um, the President of the United States was Barack Obama, and he got up and made a speech about Israel, cursed Israel, just literally cursed them, and said um, Israel has to go back to the 1967 border which meant that Israel has to get out of Judea and Samaria, which is what they call the West Bank. And I remember back then talking to people about this and in church and other places that he was actually advocating the same thing that Hitler advocated, Jude and Rhine, which means you, ha you can't have any Jews in your land. The Palestinian Authority picked up on this and they followed um, Barack Obama's lead, and they said, no Jews allowed to live here. No um, businesses, nothing, no Jews. So that would mean the cities basically like Hebron, um, Shechem, Shiloh, Bethlehem. Um, I mean, all of these cities where God had placed his people that's in the land of Israel um, the United Nations, Barack Obama, Palestinian Authority, European Union, Russia, everybody decided that no Jews are allowed to live in that land. What, what's bizarre about that, that would make Israel only nine miles wide up once you get up past Tel Aviv. Because that's with the West Bank. It's only 50 miles wide from the Mediterranean to the Jordan. And nine miles wide, man, you are sure to kill the Jews and fight and and they, they, they'll be done. So there's no way Israel knows what their security needs. Can they leave the land, that land? So they have had these settlements there. And the settlements have just grown. After 1967, I think it was like around 10,000 Jews living in Judea and Samaria. And it jumped what they call the West Bank to today almost 700,000 Jews. But it is the um, opinion of the Biden administration. It is the opinion of this government. It is the opinion of the UN and the EU right now that Israel is not allowed to have one Jew. It's the same thing that Obama did. Not allowed to have one Jew. So think about what happened. The United States government came against everybody that lives there. All 700,000 Jews that live there and anybody who makes anything they will label that product so that people will not buy it that's what the administration is doing that is cursing the nation of Israel we brought a curse on ourselves and so Obama is trying to bring this curse on them fast forward from 2011 to 2014 2014 and 2015 were the four blood moons and that was important because they landed in a row on Passover and then Feast of Tabernacles. Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, okay, ending in around October or late September of 2015. And people say, well, that's not really a sign, but let me just read you about um, that whole thing about the blood moons, okay? Because they have happened before um, when they come on the biblical feasts 
then usually around the time that that happens in that two-year period something significant always happened with the nation of Israel and I'm, I need to talk about this because I think it leads up to what just happened Monday and so let me just talk about this in 1943 I'm um, 1493 in 1494 there were the four blood moons just like there were in 2014 and 2015 and what had happened well you know what happened in 1492 you know Columbus sells the ocean blue but the Spaniards Spain kicked all the Jews out and killed many Jews and so it was a sign to the nations, to the nation of Israel, get out of Dodge, you know, basically, all right? Um, and then there was a blood moon tetrad, get this, the next one up was 1949-1950. So Israel becomes a nation in 1948, and then what happens? War. And so God is giving a sign, look, you're, you're in war, Passover, Tabernacles, Passover, Tabernacles. Now, why is that significant? Why is why did the lunar eclipses come on Passover and then Tabernacles? Well, because there are seven feasts of the Lord, and the feasts themselves are seasons. This is what it says in Genesis 1.14. Right? They'll be for, for signs and for seasons. And not seasons just as, you know, the fall season, the winter season, right? Spring, summer. But seasons of what God's doing in history. And so when the lunar eclipses come on Passover and then Feast of Tabernacles, you're talking about all seven of the feasts, which means that is the picture of all the history of what's going to do, God's going to do in history up to the millennium. The Feast of Tabernacles is a celebration of the future thousand year reign of Christ and so here the world and you can you can see this in a lot of nations with England and Italy and Germany and Russia all these nations the British especially threw the Jews out of their countries killed them took all of their stuff and that happened all over wherever the Jews were going okay and then the next one was okay 1967 68 and this is really the the really really important one so 67 68 we had a four blood moon tetrad passover tabernacles passover tabernacles and what is important about this is to realize that the plan of god was moving forward because not only did they get into the land and they were probably put on maybe you know five percent of what the Belfort Declaration asked for and then all of the Arab nations just walked out in 1947 wouldn't even vote uh, which is a good thing they, they were kind of dumb about that so Israel becomes a nation um, May 14 1948 they attack to try to destroy them they do it again in 56 now it happens in 67 they're doing it again because they want to destroy the nation of Israel why do they want to do that because Satan it's perverting their minds and their thinking to get that done. But here's the miracle. Israel secured the city of Jerusalem to themselves and Judea and Samaria. But they didn't take possession. And the Bible says they have to take possession of their land. And it's prophesied. And all of these prophecies, and God talks about it, okay? There is an interesting um, verse about signs in Jeremiah. I want to read this verse to you and use it because we are not paying attention to the signs. That, to me, Israel becoming a nation, that was a huge sign. But even bigger is when they got Jerusalem. And then what happens? The UN comes out. I mean, after that point, the UN is against Israel in every possible single way they could be. And it is worse, worse, worse today. It's amazing. So here's the verse in Jeremiah 10. It says, Thus says the Lord, Do not learn the ways of the nations, and do not be terrified by the signs of the heavens, although the nations are terrified by them. 
Israel is not supposed to be afraid, but why are they so afraid today? Why, why are they so fearful of what America is going to do, what the world thinks about them? Oh my gosh, they're losing the media war, you know what? They always lose the media war. I mean, Israel, Israel could do the best that they ever want, and they're going to lose the media war. The whole world is against them. And so it's just crazy that they live in such fear. They're like the 10 spies. They fear the, 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 all of these giants, right? And so Netanyahu says, we're not going to stop until we destroy Hamas. And then um, our administration attacks him, get on the phone. He says, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to America because America voted against, cursed us at the UN. I'm not going to come. They got a phone call. Uh, apparently in the phone call, he was being screamed at uh, Netanyahu by the president of the United States. And basically telling them, you need a ceasefire, you cannot go and fight in Rafa, you know, all these kinds of things. And then what happens? All right, well, this is very interesting um, what happens, okay? And let me, let me read um, uh, something about what happened, okay? So he screams, he curses Israel, he says... Um, the United States says to Netanyahu, you ever do what we say, if you don't get out of Gaza, basically to save Hamas, that's what they want to do, then we will not give you um, what you need to fight the war. All right, that's basically what America said, okay? And next day, the UN is Security Council is voting uh, and discussing the Israel-Hamas war, seeking a way to curse Israel. All right, so this was Friday. So April 5th, 2024, not 24 hours after um, the United States cursed out Netanyahu and screamed at him, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake strikes New York City, okay? And I don't know what to make of this, um, but uh, that earthquake was the first in 140 years. 4.8 earthquake. And it just rocked the place, okay? And so I'm thinking, wow, just don't mess with God. So that UNA, the UN Security Council is constantly, more than any other nation, you know, every year, they will give more um, resolutions against Israel, to curse Israel, to hate on Israel, than all the nations of the world put together. Usually there's like two or three UN resolutions against other nations, and there will be like 20 against Israel, right? And it's just bizarre kind of what they do. So I'm looking at what's going on, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, so what happened during the blood moons? The Obama is still cursing Israel every way he can, and in 2015, the United States decides at the Supreme Court to um, pass the Obergefell decision, okay, which changed the definition of marriage. All right, well, that was a sign. What is it called? As it was in the days of Lot, it is the Lot sign that when your nation goes against God, tells God that his definition of, mar his definition of marriage is wrong, and you need to accept our um, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, lot, um, days of lot, uh, view of marriage, um, that is some dangerous stuff that brings the judgment of God. And so what was happening, but they were lunar eclipses, so they really, it was more about Israel than it was about us. Well, what happened was that the United States was pulling out of the Middle East and if you're a great power and you're pulling out your power of the Middle East, saying we want to give the power in the Middle East, not to Israel, but to Iran, that's what Obama was doing, there another major power will come into that vacuum that was um, left by the United States. And who was that? Russia. Wow, you can't make this stuff up, guys. So we passed June of 2015, the Obergefell decision, 
two months later, here comes Russia building military bases, Air Force, right, naval, a naval base, army bases all over the place. Why is that significant? Because now they're doing it right now. They're all the way down uh, uh, on the Golan Heights, on the border of Israel. Russia has been going down. Let me, let me just read. Just from the last month, th this is some of the, of the um, uh, articles, headlines. Listen to this, okay? New Russian military posts along Israel-Syria border. Putin's big message to Netanyahu. He's threatening Netanyahu. America's threatening Netanyahu. But this is co consistent with what the Bible says in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Putin's cryptic threat to Netanyahu, massive Russian troop deployment along Israel-Syrian border. Russia installs third military post at Israel-Syria border while Iranian embassy was being attacked. This is over the last four weeks. Russia sets up observation points in Syria on the Golan Heights. New Russian observation posts have propped up in the southwest Syria amid increased tensions between pro-Iranian groups in Israel in the Israel-Hamas war. So what do we see going on here, guys? What we see is that those f four tetrads, blood moons, set up the God made God prophecy. That's what it did. But it also set up that America is leaving the Middle East. Okay, so let's fast forward to 2017. So now Trump becomes president. Um, Obama is leaving office curses Israel once again at the UN. But Trump is known for saying, I'm going to bless Israel because Jerusalem is the eternal capital city of Israel. But God, in 2017, sends the great American eclipse. And so it goes from like Seattle, Washington, all the way across the United States this way. And everybody's like, whoa, you know, we can read Solarium and we know one's coming seven years later. And that made everybody wake up. And then we had the Revelation 12 sign. Okay, what's that's happened before? You know, same thing has happened in the, you know, Virgo and, and the signs in the skies. And everybody's like, whoa, here we go. The, those those stars went right into the position that the Bible says that is a sign to the world do not mess with Israel I mean it's like God saying don't please don't mess with Israel because if you get mess with Israel you're gonna have your hat handed to you and if you know anything about Revelation 12 that is the second half of the tribulation period so God sending that sign was basically saying guys you know what's gonna happen to you if you continue down this route well Trump, unfortunately, went down that route. So you go about three and a half years, really seriously, guys. Go three and a half years from that sign, okay? And what happened? So much pressure was put on Trump. He did move the embassy and blessed Israel. And I remember, I was in a conundrum during those days, okay? Uh-oh, I see my son right behind me. Um, what are you doing, Nick? Get out of here. Um... Here's the conundrum I was in, and and this was one of the weird things that happened with this, um, you know, peace to prosperity thing that he was talking about. I'm going to make the greatest deal in his pride. Trump said, I'm going to make this great deal for the nation of Israel, okay? But here was the reality on the ground when you're watching it, guys. This is serious, okay? And I really struggled with this for at least two years. On the one hand, Trump was saying... Israel, you don't have a peace partner in the Palestinian Authority. And so Trump cut off the Palestinian Authority, cut off money, made them move their stuff out of East Jerusalem, said Jerusalem, the eternal capital city of all of Jerusalem is Israel's. Not part of it is going to be for any future two-state solution. I was going out of my mind like, wow, when were we ever going to see that? But at the same time, guys, in the press, if you remember this, in the press, they were saying that uh, Trump was opening the door for Israel to annex all of what they call the West Bank. We call Judea and Samaria, right? 
and incredible pressure was coming down on Trump, on Netanyahu. You cannot take your land. You cannot take your land. Okay? And I'm praying, Lord, don't ever let this, whatever stupid thing Trump is putting together, this peace to prosperity plan, don't ever let it see the light of day. I don't want it to see the light of day. And unfortunately, from the um, Great American Clip sign to him uh, issuing that, that plan, okay, in January 2020, when he put that plan out, and I remember reading this plan, I still was in that conundrum and hope. I'm saying, Lord, I don't want this plan to go out. All right, it came out. I read the dumb thing. And I'm going, okay, Israel still has a chance here. If Netanyahu would just step up and do the right thing, he could write a basic law. This is what they do in Israel. They write a basic law. The basic law says all of Judea and Samaria is Israeli land not Palestinian land. He had the opportunity to do that. He did not do that. And in the um, plan that Trump put together, it gave the opportunity for the Palestinians, if they do this and this and this, they could have a two-state solution. So again, it divided the land of Israel. And then what happened? Two months later, the coronavirus breaks out. That's 2020, here we are. And that was what, March of 2020, here we are, right? in 2024 and if people have spiritual eyes and eyes of faith you have to be watching that these things are spiritual okay they're not just political economic military it's not all that this was all a build-up this was all a build-up to the point where the nation of israel once again i mean the nation of america once again cursed israel fell in line with what Satan's doing with all the nations of the world. What he wants is what Hitler did, but he wants it for all people. Good night. Okay, my grandchildren are yelling good night. Okay, listen. With all of that in mind, um, let me just read some passages of Scripture to you. Okay? And I like, I like what God says, all right, in Jeremiah. All right? Um, and he talks a lot um, in his uh, prophets about the nation of Israel, you know, coming back. And um, let me start with Zephaniah. Okay, Zephaniah 2. Gaza will be abandoned and Ashkelon a desolation. Ashdod will be driven out at noon. Ekron will be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast. The nation of the Cherethites, the word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan of land of the Philistines, and I will destroy you so there will be no inhabitant. Where? In Gaza. And the coast will be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They will pasture on it in the houses of Ashkelon. They will lie down at evening, for the Lord their God will care for them and restore their fortune. What is God saying in the book of Zephaniah? Zephaniah is the prophet at the same time, okay, um, to the king Josiah as Jeremiah. They're at the same time. And he has given end times prophecies about what God is specifically going to do. Right? In the Gaza Strip. What we call the Gaza Strip. That was Philistine territory. And it was known for having the Nephilim. It was known for having Goliath. And this was what put the fear. The same fear in the ten spies. It's in the nation of Israel right now. And what is God saying? I'm going to have to do what I do, like I did to Pharaoh. I'm going to have to do this by my power and strength and force it. So what am I saying is going to happen? The Gaza Strip is going to be taken by the nation of Israel. But God is going to have to do it by force. He's going to force Israel. He is going to make them do it against the will of the British, against the will of the Americans, against the will of the UN, against the will of the EU, against the will of the Russians, against the will of the Chinese, they are going to get hit by God so that they get their land. And at the same time as Iran, Iran is putting all this pressure on Israel, Hezbollah in the north and Lebanon are talking about they're going to come down and they're going to destroy Israel. <laughs> Seriously? I don't know how you're going to do that. And so Jeremiah 31 says, 
I just love this passage in Jeremiah 31, verse 27, 28. He says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man, the seed of beast, as I has watched over them to pluck them up, to break them down, to overthrow them, to destroy them, to bring disaster on them. That happened, Babylonian captivity, all the way to, to 1948 when he started bringing them back as a nation. He said, so I will watch over them to build them up and to plant them. Very important passage. Why? Because north, southern Lebanon is part of the nation of Israel. And when the Hezbollah took that, when Israel left there and gave it all back um, to Lebanon, and all it did was bring war. Every time the Jews give up their land, it brings war. So what do we have in Israel today? We have leader after leader after leader saying, and these are all leftist leaders in there, okay, all betraying Netanyahu, wanting to get rid of Netanyahu. Our own government says they want to get rid of Netanyahu. Um, they don't want Jews moving into Gaza. They want the Jews out of Judea and Samaria, out of what they call the West Bank, which is a lie from Satan, West Bank. There's no, no such thing as West Bank. It doesn't exist. It's just a figment of their imagination. This is the land of Israel, and it is Judea and Samaria. Okay, where's my notes here? But, I mean, listen, I wrote this verse down. This is Deuteronomy 32, all right, where God is setting all this up, talking about it, and what people don't understand is to say, well, the Jews say it's their land. Well, they say it's their land because it's God's land. It's my land, God said. And I'm giving it to my people, Israel. So the land of Israel is being given to the people of Israel by the living God. That is what is happening. Okay? So in Deuteronomy 32, verse 43, he says, this. listen to this. Rejoice, O nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, will render vengeance on his adversaries, and will atone for his land and his people now this is deuteronomy 32 right right before moses dies and joshua is about to go into the land and it's the first time they're going to have the land for themselves right because the bible said that abraham it was promised to him but he didn't take it and the promise was after they were in egypt 400 years then they would come back so let me read it again in, in light of the fact that joshua is about to go in okay Rejoice, O nations, with his people. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What did God just do? He says to all the nations of the world, hey, all you Canaanite nations, right? This is what I'm trying to tell the Palestinians today, these Philistines down in Gaza, the Moss, I mean, that they all are living out what the Bible says they were going to live out because they are trying to keep Israel from having their land and they're all going to fail. But God commanded the nations of the world, listen nations, rejoice that I am about to give my land back to my people, Israel. It will be a blessing to the world. Okay? So he says, rejoice, O nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. Oh, what is that? Okay, so here are all these Jews going up to the land. They were fought. They were cursed. They were um, destroyed in Egypt when the Egyptians beat on them and mistreated them and abused them and God said I'm gonna avenge the blood of my servants I think Hamas doesn't understand on October 7th when they went and murdered all of these Jews um, God is gonna get vengeance he will avenge them right and God says that we are not to take revenge. Why? Vengeance is to be left for the Lord. And so in spite of how bad it looks right now in Israel, you, you look at the news, and they're saying there's no way Israel can win. There's no way Israel has any chance of winning this thing. Um, that's all from people who don't know God, and they don't think of spiritual things. Um, you, if you want to run with horses, dude, you got to be fast. And there's no human being fast enough to run with a horse. 
And the Bible uses that picture here in the book of Jeremiah. So can you run with horses? No, you can't. You think you can win a war with your armies? You think you can win the war with AI technology, this technology, that technology? No, you can't. Not against the living God. Okay? You can only win a war if God causes you to win a war. Nobody fights a war and wins a war unless God gives them the victory. And so you think Iran and Russia and all these countries with all of their might, with all of their arms, with all of their people, the United States turning against the Serbs, hating on Israel, um, and it gets really bad because the United States says they want a color revolution in Israel to get rid of Netanyahu and only put in power in Israel whom America wants there, our CIA State Department. By the way, State Department, don't get me up going on them, State Department has constantly cursed Israel since um, World, World War II. They've hated on the Jews, did not want, told Truman, do not vote for Israel to become a nation. They've always been filled with people. And it doesn't matter who's at the top, who's that Secretary of State, because if the Secretary of State is pro-Israel, all the people underneath them hate them and do everything to work against them. It's just crazy, crazy history. And so the verse goes on to say, okay, God will render vengeance on his adversaries and will atone for his land. What does that mean? Okay, if you shed innocent blood in the land, your blood will be shed. So all these Hamas dudes, all of them in Rafa, all of them, all the way through the Gaza Strip, all of them that are in um, Judea, Samaria right now, all of them that are building um, arms in Judea, Judea and Samaria to kill Jews, to do in Judea and Samaria what Hamas did, okay? Um, all of those Hezbollah who are working to kill all the Jews, all of them, uh, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He is going to take vengeance on you. And it is not going to be a good day. By the way, when I look at what Iran is doing in Judea and Samaria right now, in what they call the West Bank, how they are arming a people, and, and Jews in Israel are talking about this, like constantly trying to ship um, arms into Israel to help them go kill Jews. The world will side with them. They side with Hamas. Um, and this is really, really a spiritual problem. And the Bible says that is not going to happen. The Bible says the opposite is going to happen. And so um, that gets me to um, currently what is going on, okay? Israel attacked um, next to the UN, I mean, next to the embassy, Iranian embassy in Damascus and blew it up and killed seven military officers from Iran. Um, one of them was responsible for running the IRGC um, and all of their groups um, in Lebanon, in Syria, so that they can attack the nation of Israel. And they, got, they were killed. The world went nuts. United States went nuts. UN went nuts. You know, all of this stuff. And it just shows how the whole world is against Israel. Well, Iran, Iran is licking its chops. Guys, I can't tell you how disturbing this was. But Iran, um, I listened to a podcast from Iran. So, I mean, obviously the guy's speaking, you know, in, in whatever Persian or Persian, whatever they call their language. And I'm reading down, and he is basically saying that, look how weak Israel is. They don't even know how to fight in Gaza. They don't know how to fight and kill people. Um, and this is Israel puts up this flag and basically says we're the most moral military look how good we do only killing the enemy not the civilians and it is true the numbers are unbelievable what they're doing but what they see Israel doing moral they see as weakness because they can't even win against Hamas seriously since October 7th they just should have blown these guys away and been done with it but they came to the, so Iran is licking their chops right now. They're like, they are so weak. And America, they're like, we are so helpful for America, our enemies help against the Jews. I mean, this is what this guy's saying. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, the United States is helping Iran. Why? Because Obama really runs the Biden administration. And he is about cursing Israel, getting rid of Israel more than anything. 
and Russia's moving down how oh, you can't make this stuff up so what is the wars that you're talking about right there well the Psalms 83 war and Isaiah 17 war when God is going to destroy Damascus completely it will not exist anymore and then the Psalms 83 war is going to be that God um, impacts I think all of Judea and Samaria is going to go to Israel in this war and the whole Gaza Strip and so they're going to have a big fight on their hands oh, let me see what's going on in time and I just been talking off the cuff about all this stuff and I was following my order of how I wanted to think about it well that brings me to um, the solar eclipse so here it is right April 8th solar eclipse and what is happening in Israel that's the most significant very very significant you have um, the hope and the dream that they can sacrifice the red heifer here in two weeks and Satan knows like oh my gosh he is doing his best to curse Israel through the United States of America and because America has usually stood with Israel pretty well on all of these years and even when we had administrations like the Clinton administration who hated on them and did evil to them um, the Congress stood firm and strong for them but that's not the case anymore there are individual um, congressmen and senators who stand for Israel but by and large today um, the woke crowd the um, river to the sea gotta get rid of Israel crowd is more and more in power empowered that so much so that Jews are even thinking about not voting for Democrats this year voting for Republicans we have never seen that happen before um, and so this is really really um, an interesting um, so let me go to a, a article here and I'm gonna pull this up see if you can see it here and just show you how how problematic things are right now okay Saudi Emirati writers warn about attempts of Iran Hamas Muslim Brotherhood to overthrow Jordanian regime this is tantamount to declaration of war on Jordan's allies an attempt to instigate the new Arab Spring so let me just say something about this article from memory um, Iran has been working to get rid of Jordan for a long time and not only do they feel empowered by Russia and the United States to attack Israel and destroy Israel to launch this great northern war um, from Lebanon Hezbollah where um, Israel pulled out some troops from the Gaza to go north because they think this war is about to go and then Trump I mean uh, Netanyahu had to come out and say no 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 we have a date we're taking Rafa we're wiping out Hamas and Biden says you do that you don't get anything you know and uh, it is a total mess Iran is licking its chops to take out Jordan and the war will come from Jordan also and this is very significant guys which means that these biblical wars are about to take place but God has the last word on it and so I want to read from Ezekiel 36 and there's a whole bunch of passages I could read from um, now, I think these wars are going to kind of come quickly and the United States saying they're not going to help uh, America any or uh, Israel anymore fits the prophecy of Ezekiel 38 and 39 so let me go there and in Ezekiel 38 and 39 you have the Gog Magog prophecy but in chapter 36 kind of the run up to the Gog Magog war and, and America's not in, involved with that God talks about how he's giving his land back to his people this is very consistent in Isaiah um, in Isaiah there's some great passages about this um, very consistent in Jeremiah um, Zephaniah Zechariah Zechariah has some great passages about this what God is saying here in Ezekiel 36 is pretty much the same what he's saying through the scriptures um, Amos 9 has a really clear clear message look these nations don't they want to keep my land for themselves guess what it's over I'm taking you out 
okay and this is what god says here all right um he says that um the enemy and these nations have spoken against god and god's people saying aha the everlasting heights have become our possession that's a really important word possession it is consistently used in the torah okay in the writings in the prophets to say that when god begins to move to give the land back land of israel back to israel all the nations of the world will come against them and then god himself is going to move to give possession of his land to his people even the ancient cities so when you go down here okay he says thus says the lord god i have sworn that surely the nations which are around you will endure their own insults insults that they put on israel which they do every day but you O mountains of israel will pour forth your branches bear your fruit for my people israel and they will soon come for behold i am for you i will turn to you you will be cultivated and you will be sown and I will multiply men on you, all the house of Israel, all of it. And the cities will be inhabited, and the waste places will be rebuilt. And I will multiply on you man and beast, and they will increase and be merciful, uh, fruitful. I will cause you to be inhabited as you were formerly. I will treat you better than at first. Thus you will know that I am the Lord. Yes, I will cause men, my people Israel, to walk on you and possess you. So that you will become the inheritance and never again bereave them of children. So here is consistent. You know that the scriptures teach there's going to be signs. Right? And the heavens and the earth. When God is going to bring the last days. Jesus brought this up in Matthew 24. Um, he quotes it. His quote actually was from the book of Joel about this. Let me read that book, that verse um, from the book of Joel. Um, here, let me look for it here real quick. Okay. So, he said in, in Joel 2, he says, I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire, bills of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness. Right? Now, what is that? Solar eclipse. The moon to blood, that's a lunar eclipse. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So, we're before the day of the Lord, guys. So what I'm saying is this solar eclipse came as a sign from 2017, from 2014-15, as warnings to America, repent, turn away from your witness. But no, what did we do? We committed the four eye judgments. We, we, we said to God, immorality, idolatry, killing innocents is more important to us, and the nation of Israel means nothing, um, and we're going to curse Israel. And you think that's not a sign of God's going to bring judgment? Now, God always did this after the eclipses. After the eclipses, things start happening. And what I'm saying is, you know, we might have a few months and we're going to be seeing some big time earthquakes and some big time problems coming because the nation refuses to do what is right. The nation refuses to repent of her sins and repent of the wickedness and the evil. Now, we as Christians have done it. So thank God he's been blessing us. He's blessing you. I know that he has. But this nation, I believe, will not be a superpower very much longer. Because God is working against um, and the wicked are planning evil things. And God is going to use it to bring this nation down because they have to move out of the way. So that Russia could go down into Israel and lose. So that Antichrist can rise. And that's basically the update that I have today. Um, I hope it's not true. I mean, I'm planning on seeing a lot of people baptized next week. And I'm planning a missions trip. And I'm hoping and praying that God um, moves on our behalf. And uh, restrains the evil one. Uh, and turns us to repent. Wouldn't that be the greatest thing ever? Um, so... If any are hearing this and don't know the Lord, let me just say a word to you. Um, Jesus is very clear about this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. 
you must pursue the Lord Jesus. And if you pursue him and give your life to him, he'll save you. But if you don't, he's coming back soon. Get ready. <laughs> um, get ready because it's not going to be good for the world. I don't think you want to be left behind. Um, the rapture is going to happen soon. You don't want to be left behind. And so we're 2,000 years away of the teaching of the rapture. So it's been 2,000 years we're waiting. So it's very close um, comparatively. So um, pray and ask the Lord to make you ready um, for it. Well, thank you, everybody. It's been great being with you. Let me go ahead and stop this.